If you're looking to build your own stock watch list in Google Sheets, look no further. In today's video, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to build this stock watch list in your own Google Sheet. All right, so let's jump right in and create our columns first. And so we'll just say stock company name, current price, 52 week high, 52 week low, 365 day chart, day gain loss in dollar, day gain loss as a percentage, market cap, Average volume, PE, earnings per share, and beta. And then let's add some other stats here. Let's say some 30 day stats, and you can adjust these as you would like or add more sections and one year stats. So for 30 stats, 30 day stats, we'll do price change since and percent change and then we'll just copy and paste those for our year stats as well and then we'll just go ahead and call this one we'll give ourselves a little buffer here at the end and delete the rest of those columns all right so let's go ahead and shrink this one down to two and then let's go ahead and just do some quick formatting on our column headers. So you can again change these to whatever color you like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these and center them there. Change the font a little bit. And then let's go ahead and just merge these. These are kind of noting those two sections there. Maybe make them a little darker or something like that. And then maybe something like that. There we go. And then I think I'm actually going to go a little bit darker on this. And maybe change this to something like this, maybe. All right, there we go. So let's just enter in a couple stocks just so we can kind of see how this will work as we go. So let's go ahead and start with our first formula. We're going to use Google Finance for basically all of these. And so if you're looking for what else is available, you can open this up and go to learn more. And you can look through the help to see what all is available from there. So for now, let's go ahead and just pick the cell with our stock ticker, which is B4 for our first one. And then for this first attribute, we're going to just do name, the company name. Let's make this just a little wider. And at this point, we can just drag this down. And so if we add some more, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste a list of some common stock tickers in here. And then I can just drag this down all the way. And this will give us the names of each of those companies. So let's go ahead and run through the rest of our formulas we're going to use. So for next one, we're going to do Google Finance and B4. And just a simple one, price. And then I can just go over here, double click, and let that go down. Next, Google Finance, B4, and this one will be high, 52. So that would be the highest price in the past 52 weeks. Next is 52 week low. And then this next one is going to be a little more complicated. So we want a line chart or we can change this to a column chart if we like for the past 365 days. And so we can go ahead and get this Google Finance before price. But we don't want just today's price. We want for the past 365 days. So if you look down here, you can see we have optional start and end date and so what we can do for this then is today and that is a formula here returns the current date 
minus 365. And then we could do today or today minus one, however you want to do that. And this point is going to return something like this, but that isn't very useful for us at the moment. So what we're going to do is wrap this in a spark line. And there we have a simple little line chart. So we could do some things in here. We could add some options to make this uh, a column chart, for example, but with 365 days, it's not going to be probably very useful. So we'll just keep it at a line chart for now and copy that down. Now you can see all the line charts for those. And then let, next, let's go to the day gain loss. And so we'll go back to our Google Finance for change and pull that one down and then another Google Finance before and change percent. Now this one comes as a whole number. So this is actually 1.46%. And so if you want to render this as a percentage, you'll want to divide this by 100. And then we can copy that one down. And then market cap. Just like that. Now this one's kind of weird because the numbers are very long. And so for these large numbers, instead of dividing by a thousand here, let's go ahead and do some custom number formatting. And so if we go here on this one, two, three, and then we'll scroll down to custom number format. And what I want to do here, and I'm going to drop this in the description below. What this will do is it'll render numbers as either million, billion, or trillion. And so let's go ahead and apply this. And there you can see those market caps with those relative ones. So let's go ahead and go to our next one, market volume. And this would be volume average. And then again, here we can use that custom formatting. And so if we look here, I have a different one. So it goes a little bit smaller. Let's see, that might be a little more appropriate. We probably don't need to go to trillion and we might dip out, down to the thousands. So you can adjust that as needed. I'll put both of these in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and keep on moving. So next let's do our PE. So We'll do PE as our attribute and then copy that one down. And so in some of these, you may have an error. And so what we'll do in this one is we'll put an if error function around this and just put an A. And then let's just copy that one down. So if it doesn't render, then it'll fill in with that. And then B4. And then we'll do earnings per share. And I need to finish that function there, Google Finance. And drag that one down. And then finally, beta. And drag that one down again. And then our final section here is some 30 day and one year stats. And so let's go ahead and do that for the 30 day Google Finance before price. And then here we're only going to specify the start date. We don't need an end date. And so this will be today minus 30. And then as we saw before with the 365 day chart, when you do this, it comes up with this set or array of data. And so we actually want this one. So the way we're going to get to that so we don't have this all in each one is we're just going to use a little index formula. And what that does is it says within this data. So in this data, we have two rows and two columns. And so this is asking for a row and a column. And so we want the second row, second column. And so we can just do comma two, comma two. And that will give us that 30 day price. We can copy that down and let's go ahead and just copy this formula right here and move this over to the one year and change that minus 30 to minus 365. 
and then we can drag that down. Except for if you notice here, if I double click on this, it's not doing anything. The reason why is because it's looking for something here. And so when you try to autofill, it needs something in the column to the left. So let's go ahead and fill that out and then we'll drag those down. So change sense. So what this is going to be is how much has the price changed since 30 days ago? So what we're going to do is equals and grab that current price minus that 30 day price. And so it's gone up 10.99 since then. Let's go ahead and center some of these, make these a little narrower, get some of our settings in here. Just as we're getting wrapped up here, kind of set some of this up real quick. Which makes it a little easier to see what we're doing. There we go. Maybe we can cut off a little bit of Alibaba there. And stock. All right. So 229, 79, 218, 8. And so, yes, it's gone up about 1099. And so let's go ahead and double click that one to drag it down. And then, as a percentage, what we're going to do is we're going to take this as a percentage on that original price. And so, if we do that, it's gone up 5%. So, we can go ahead and drag that down. And now this one will drag down. And then we can do our change here again. So this would be current price minus our price a year ago. And then this divided by price a year ago. And there we go. Let's add that percentage as well. And then we can go ahead and modify these a little bit, get a little more streamlined here. We can get our price down a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up by just doing some quick formatting for the looks here. So let's just add a quick title. We'll call it stock watch list. Make that a little bigger, maybe add a little border down below. And then we could add some alternating colors here just to see where we're at. And you can pick whatever color strikes your fancy. Maybe we could do green here since that's what we're doing. And then it's up to you. I like to get rid of these grid lines and then do it manually where I want them. And so maybe you like this look without any vertical lines. And if so, you can just leave it just like it is. And otherwise, we could add some. If we just scroll over here, come down, maybe we could add a little bit of a line between, just give a little distinction there. Or you can do a little more if you like. Something like that maybe. And then let's, Put some bigger borders maybe around this. So before we get any further, if you want to add more stocks in here, let's say, let's just reuse one as an example. So Coca-Cola, for example. So currently nothing's happening. And so if you add a more another stock down here, just simply select this next cell with the name, scroll over to the far right, click on that one while holding shift, and then just drag that whole row down. And what it'll do is then it'll fill in for that. And so you can keep doing that. Let's say, let's go like this. Another thing you can do as well is just click and drag. So just click and drag over and then drag that down. So either way it works and you can do whichever floats your boat in that regard. I'm gonna get rid of some extra rows here. And let's get rid of that one as well. And so just for the sake of this, I'm going to say this is my whole data set at the moment. 
and select it all. I'm going to go with that double thick border. And then I'm going to apply it in the top, left side, and bottom. I'm not going to do it on the right side. And I didn't do it across here because I want this inside of my border. So now I'm going to select this side. And then do top, right, and bottom. And now I just need to add it to the left of just this cell. There we go. Now I can just add some white in between these, just like that. And we're looking pretty good. So at this point, we can have some different options we can do. We can put some like that in between there. And then you can decide if you want it down between those or not, or if you want to keep them a little more together. We could do something like that there. And then finally, just to wrap this up, we could do some number formatting here. We want this to be currency. It's up to you. Some people like currency. Some people think it distracts. So that's really up to you. We can do the same thing here. Let's just add those dollars for now. And then these are both dollars. Beta is a metric, so we'll leave that one alone. Price. Then this final price. All right, so that is it for today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful to you. I am gonna release a video shortly that's gonna show you how to integrate this watch list and add in your current holdings along with the amount spent. So that way you can see both where the stock is at currently, how much you spent, and your current holdings. And so make sure to check out our other videos for more tutorials on both Google Sheets and AppScript. And as always, have a wonderful day.